welcome back to another edition of the Podmen. I'm Brad. I'm Brian. I'm Podman Ron. And we're anxiously awaiting Alex to join us. He's on a he's on a business call right now, I think. I'm assuming it's a business call because uh if he put us on hold because of some girl, that would just be disappointing, right? It would be disappointing. Well yeah. it would be <laughs> Brian's like, uh, these kids. These kids and their girls. All right. Well, we took a little bit of time off, uh, basically because there wasn't a whole lot going on. But now all of a sudden it feels like things are popping here toward the end of the year. And Alex is saying he's ready finally. So uh, maybe he will join us here as we get started. But um, first, let's uh, let's hit the news. <laughs> All right, in the news, a lot of a lot of space news out there, Brian, including uh, some stuff that you think, I'm assuming you think is great news about the Disney movies, maybe not so great news about the Dis- or Disney movie. Did I say Disney? Jesus. The Star Wars movies. Star Wars, there you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> so good news about the Star Wars movies, bad news about the Star Wars theme park at Disney. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, yeah, there's a couple things that... Uh, um, uh, we're in the news today or this week. Uh, there's rumor now that Dave Filoni and um, John Favreau are going to move from the the TV the Disney Plus TV series into their own Disney movie or trilogy. So, which would be fantastic one. Like that, they're they're clearly Dave Filoni's had the best handle on on Star Wars since uh, the Clone Wars since relaunch. George Lucas. Yeah, since George Lucas, Dave Filoni is the is the guy, is the Star Wars guy. And so obviously he's the one that did Mandalorian season one and two. He did the Clone Wars, Rebels, uh, the the new Clone, um, the continuation of Clone Wars show that we just got. Uh, so Dave Filoni moving into the movies will be fantastic. That was what everybody was kind of clamoring for. They wanted Dave Filoni to be the guy that took over Star Wars when there was rumors about um, Catherine. Uh, oh, crap. What's her name? Kennedy, yeah, there you uh, go. Yeah, uh, um, when there was were rumor about her, when the whole debacle about uh, Last Jedi, not Last Jedi, but um, uh, Skywalker. Um, what was the last Star Wars movie? The oh, uh, the the last the Skywalker? Rise of Skywalker, the Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. The when last that Skywalker. whole thing fell apart and everybody was clamoring for her head, and there was even rumor that Bob Iger like offered Star Wars to J.J. Abrams. And uh, whatever he was hoping for was Dave Filoni then. But if Dave Filoni's getting his own movie, or better yet, his own trilogy, that'll be fantastic. So love me. That, 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 he's the uh, the the uh, what's the uh, silver lining to all this Star Wars garbage we've got oh, yeah. in the past <laughs> twenty years. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, hold Brian. on, everyone. Five men. A five splendors <laughs> and a shot of fat-free vanilla. Oh, he's oh. on a diet. Someone's on a diet. Fat free oh, vanilla. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, that's well. great news, though. I mean, that's really good news because <laughs> yeah, he's celebrating. Else, yeah, I'm celebrating with a uh, five splenda. You know what? Six splenda. You know? Yeah. I know. I'm going nuts. Spare no expense, nuts, yeah. young lady. <laughs> no, the nuts was the vanilla. I mean, I added the vanilla. Yeah. Fat free there. All right, well, you're shaking it up here toward the end of the year, Podman Ron. Uh, Alex, thank you for uh, joining us after your business call. Uh, you're excited about this new prospect of uh, going deeper into a better galaxy here with Star Wars, I assume. Yeah, sure. I just I, We haven't gotten star- any Star Wars content. It feels like forever, or at least stuff that I've watched. So it's like, yeah, all right. <laughs> All right, he's all for it. Hi. We know they rumored that they were going to do Knights of the Old Republic, um, uh, as a trilogy. If you did Filoni and uh, um, John Favreau doing a trilogy of Knights of the Old Republic set like you know like five hundred years in the past, that'd be thank pretty, you. Appreciate pretty it. Pretty fantastic. So, yeah, thank you. Appreciate that, Brian. As as you heard Pod Menron say. Uh, so good news on that front, but bad news elsewhere in the in the universe. Yep, absolutely. So did you guys? Uh, it's gone now. It's been pulled down. I didn't. Any, I didn't see it. Yeah. I actually saw it. Even after you said that uh, it had been pulled down, I went back and looked, and it was still there. Did you I mean, see like the full twelve minute video though? 
No, I couldn't no, find football. I no, I watched what you, you had showed, so I guess that's what. Yeah, I guess the, the big video was gone. Yeah, so uh, the launch for the Star Wars, it's not. don't call it a hotel, no. the Star Wars Galaxy Cruiser um, uh, immersive experience launched and, and it's six thousand dollars for a two-night stay <laughs> so we'll get that uh get that out there the for... <laughs> yeah uh, hopefully uh, one with three boobs uh hopefully Amen. but uh, you know uh so they did this launch video and it landed like a just a golden turd i mean people <laughs> it, it was dead on arrival um, but it featured the kid from the Goldbergs, the the guy, the the zany. I talk like this kind of guy, you know. Yeah. And uh, I don't know his name, but uh, it's him geeking out over the Star Wars hotel for like a 10, 12 minute piece, uh, and it goes through the different stuff that you can do while you're on the uh, the Galactic Star Cruiser, <laughs> and it is god awful. Like, like in a cheesy I- way, or just. Not worth six thousand dollar way. It looks super cheesy. It looks, I mean, it looks like you know, uh, bad um, dinner theater, uh, right? Yeah. And uh, um, so there's a there, there's a part where he does uh, you know lightsaber training and he puts on the blast shield and there's part where um, he he puts the the ship into hyperdrive and then there's a part there's an extended part where he's hanging out in this. Uh, uh, um, bar, <laughs> and they've got like a lounge singer and everything in the bar. It is, I mean, it, it looks like they went and instead of making a Star Wars hotel, they made a Star Wars Christmas special hotel. Wow. <laughs> that, that's Parody. the level of a <laughs> of immersion. It's like you're waiting for Lumpy to come through, but <laughs> it's god awful. And it was so bad that Disney put the video up and like pulled it back down the same day because it was laughably bad. Wow. Um, and, you know, and, and they're using this to, to wow you to spend six thousand dollars to stay two nights in this uh, not hotel. <clears throat> so let me ask you this: what what was some of the things that you get for your six thousand dollars besides the aesthetics of? You think you're in a spaceship for God's sake? Uh, you think you're in a spaceship? It's uh, from what I gathered, it's kind of like a. I mean, they try to make it as immersive as possible. So you have like all these different things kind of going on while you're there. Um, the sh- the the windows and all are are made to show like space, planets, and stars passing by and everything. Right. So it's supposed to be completely immersive. And I think it's got a back entrance into the Star Wars area of Hollywood Studios, so you can. You board the shuttle, and it's immersive where you board the shuttle. It looks like you're on right. Dagobah or, so, or uh, indoor or something. And then you're supposed to be flying, and then you land, and it, it's like you're on uh, Batu, the Star Wars area. So you but, can save you can save five thousand eight hundred dollars and just stay at a Ramada Inn. Yeah, yeah. For so two nights. for two nights, the uh, it was. I mean, it's laughably bad. And then the. Um, uh, the whole thing is like the Star Wars property is kind of on its, you know, on its on its heels, right? Like <laughs> people are pretty upset about all the Star Wars stuff, yeah, uh, right now. So the, like the the uh, why are they, the pro- why are they upset about it? What's going on there? Just the the rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Everybody was so pissed off at the way that movie yeah. ended, the way the trilogy ended, and everything. Um, it's almost like they're on their heels anyway. Then they launch the most expensive like fan service type thing you can think of. And then it's accompanied by this video that just looks unbelievably bad. Alex, did you see any of, it, any of it? I just saw the jazz singer in the club, and that was enough for me to go, this looks terrible. It just looks like a waste of money. I mean, I'm just like, it's like, if you would, like, give me, like, Jedi robes and, like, a free lightsaber, I'd be like, okay. But even then, it's like, I don't know what, well, there's nothing really to do. It's just like if you want a really expensive kids' vacation. It's like a Legoland hotel. Yeah, it's like you're on a Star Wars cruise ship. Yeah, I mean, it's, but you're landlocked. You never yeah, have to leave port. I mean, at least when you went to when it, when, you, when you would go on those Star Trek cruise, you got to meet Star Trek people. You know, all that right. you know it was like cork and shit. It wasn't wasn't exactly the the A listers. <laughs> well, there's no Shatner. <laughs> And it was Shatner, Nimoy. It was like usually Quark or uh, 
some other uh, D-lister, Paris from uh, Voyager or something. <laughs> well, speaking of Shatner, uh, you know, our, our boy Shatner went up into outer space. Uh, there's going to be like a little mini doc on it about him going in and uh to space on amazon prime next week uh shatner in space so we'll have to make sure we watch that and i like the title yeah they they, they put no effort in it whatsoever wow alliteration I think, I think i saw all i needed it was shatner in space oh my gosh i mean podman ron this is one of your this is your main guy right well, yeah he's, and, and he's you're turning your back on him don't you have a hall pass for Shatner? Yeah. I mean, I love Shatner, but I mean... I don't on. want to see a documentary about him doing the most incredible thing he's ever going to do in his life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> pretty harsh. Pretty harsh. Um, also in the news, uh, Brian, you reported this, that the, the boys from Amazon uh, are coming up with their own animated show called Di- Diabolical. Is that correct? Yeah, it's going to be like an anthology show. Uh, so the boys are going to have three programs now, wow. right? You're going to have the spinoff live action, which is going to uh, it's going to feature like the uh, the X Men characters, right? The X Men okay. universe of uh, of uh, the boys, and then you're going to have this, which is going to be the uh, anthology and kind of tell you like the history, the secret sort of history of uh, of their universe. So all animated. All right. All right. Amazon's going going all in on uh, superheroes. Yeah. yeah, they really are. Right here at the end of the superhero. Yeah, right. Well, maybe it will help save it because somebody needs to, right? For I sure. <laughs> uh, we need a, a relaunch of, I can't believe we haven't got this yet, a relaunch of the greatest American hero. I, I, I refuse to believe it. Uh, well, you, you know, not what? too too long ago, I think on Tubi, as I was goofing around on Tubi, Brian, there I saw it did watch kind of fast forwarded but i watched uh the last uh what the great uh what's it called the great american uh uh heroine heroine. yeah Yeah. that was just one episode where uh ralph uh basically hands over the super suit to some uh leggy blonde there i'm done with this i'm done crashed through Uh, enough walls (laughs) <laughs> Let me ask you all this. What did you just say? What are they rebooting? <laughs> Let, Let me ask, ask you this. this. <laughs> Let me That's ask a you good this. segue right there. <laughs> Can you repeat everything? <laughs> <laughs> you repeat everything. Wait a minute. My, what about Star Wars? After my coffee order. <laughs> <laughs> now that he's awake with those five splendors. <laughs> Brian was just saying that Amazon is balls deep in the hero biz, and why not remake the great American hero? Oh. Uh. Okay, why not remake it? It's not being remade. No, but we can only dream. Podman Ron spat out his five blended. But that's, yeah, he did a spit take. He thought I said it was coming back. <laughs> what? He's, all over the Starbucks it's over, barista. It's all over the windshield. <laughs> I was excited there for a minute. Best yeah, I could I tell. Heard. I mean, come on, man. All right. Uh, so no news to report on that. Uh, anything else? I know we've got some casting, uh, kind of casting confirmations of uh, Tom Holland is going to be Spider-Man for three more films, it sounds and, like. Three more films. And yeah. Tom Holland's going to be Fred Astaire. More importantly, Tom Holland's going to be And he's going to be Fred Astaire. I mean, Tom Holland is fucking everywhere, isn't he? He really is. He's, hey. he's the little British child. I know. <laughs> We get yeah, we got Tom Holland, uh, and I got. You know what? I realized I have two spoiler predictions uh, for Spider Man. Yeah, I've got one for Spider Man, and I've got one for uh, uh, Hawkeye. Oh, oh, okay. I got one for Hawkeye too. Wow. Okay. Well, let's. Don't you steal my? I swear don't you to God. steal that thunder? I think. <laughs> but well, uh, I said the first part of yours, Brian. No, you didn't. About the but, one. Okay, we'll get oh, into it. Later. We'll get into Dang. it later. We'll get into it later in the podcast. So, but uh, but yeah, so yeah, Tom Holland signed for three more movies. And we're, we're assuming it's the college years, which I mean, the whole thing he's been talking about for the past month about maybe it's time for Miles Morales, and right. you know, I shouldn't be playing Spider Man at thirty. That was all just him putting the screws to to Sony and to completely you know, trying to get up that some check. more money. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so Tom Holland signed for three more Spider Man films, right? Uh, which I assume will be uh, Venom will have to be in one of them. It'll, you know, <laughs> they'll force them all. one way or another. One way or the other. Uh, so you get that, and then like a, a big surprise, we got a, a trailer for a Spider-Man across the, the Spider Verse. 
Yeah, who knew this was coming out? I mean, we we knew it was coming out, but I didn't expect a trailer. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, uh, I didn't expect a trailer either. I don't know that the the everything after the jump when Spider Man twenty ninety nine comes out. I don't know that that's finished. Like anim- yeah, yeah, animation. Yeah, but yeah, it was it. I love that movie. It's sort of like Spider Verse itself. It just kind of came out of nowhere, and uh, yeah. So hopefully this will be good. It's going to be a two-parter, right? At least a two-parter. At least yeah. a two-parter. Jeez. That was the big shocker. Was the uh, was that it was Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part One? So I mean, I I didn't know that it was gonna that they intended on it being multiple chapters. I mean, I assumed they would try and do sequels. But right, right. Alex, did you know any of that? I had heard like earlier that day. I heard it was going to be a Part One before the trailer came out, and I was like, oh, ooh. But I didn't know. But I think it's. I think the most likely thing is what I what I can assume. I think Toby or Andrew is probably going to show up in that in either one or two, and maybe be the cliffhanger. I don't know. I just feel like one of those actors had their contract renewed for more Spider-Man movies. I just don't know which. I just uh, don't know. Interesting. Which. Well, that kind of leads into what I was thinking is between uh, Multiverse of Madness. <laughs> And Spider-Man No Way Home and Across the Spider-Verse, what are the odds we're going to see either live action, Miles Morales appear for a split second, or um, animated Tom Holland appear for a split second in one of these movies? So do you think they're going to tie this this movie into the Marvel Universe eventually? It's Across the Spider-Verse, right? right? Why not? We've got three multiverse movies coming out. All starring Spider-Man. yeah, yeah, and all of them have Spider-Man. So what are the <laughs> Who would odds have thought that... Spider-Man is going is the center of the multiverse in Marvel, right? I mean, I guess yeah. that makes sense, but it's sort of... Thank you, Dan Slott. Again, it's sort of like, uh, Fantastic Four would be great at that, right? Yeah, exactly. Probably. But, but yeah, well, I mean, what are the odds we make it through three of these films without right. all kinds there being bleed movies. over between the... Anim- which The most popular Spider-Man film that's probably come out, yeah. you know, in the past since the the relaunch uh, into the spider verse is, is a lot more popular than either of the Tom Holland films. Oh, by far. So wh- what are the odds that they don't do some sort of rub there between the properties? Why not? So Why not? it's my, uh, my first sort of uh, prediction. All right. So, and I'll save the other for later for later. Okay. And the other casting and news is that, uh, uh, Feige pretty much said that uh, Charlie Cox is Daredevil in the MCU. Yeah, he is. Whether he, he is whether he actually pops up again or not, who knows? But he may just mean that. Yeah, he's Daredevil. But guess what? We're never going to see Daredevil again. So fuck yeah. him. So yeah, we'll see. But it'd be great to I see mean, Daredevil pop up in Moon Knight or something like that. Hmm. That would be cool. You know or what? They've, they've all they've already told all the good Daredevil stories, and they did a great job of it. So I mean. I don't really know. Yeah, I don't know what else. Well, he could be a supporting character. That's the problem is either they go back and they they do um, Born Again again, or they do um, uh, they get into the Bendis stuff, which nobody wants to see the Bendis stuff. (laughs) Not in live action, right? Yeah. So that shit's so boring. So, well, now they could do um, Guardian Devil, you know, where... um, the Kevin Smith stuff. That would be good. They haven't I done think, it yet. I think the most likely, who's the uh, the writer who made Daredevil like fun, kind of lighthearted? Uh, Mark Wade. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be a Mark Wade Daredevil. Yeah, those Mark Wade books were really good. Yeah, I know they're really good. So I'm like, probably if they're going to go for a tonal shift, because they, like we've said, they already did Daredevil, like all the dramatic stuff. I would assume they're probably going to go for the Mark Wade era. I want to go back and read those because I started it and didn't finish it. But yeah, those those Mark Wade Daredevils were really good because it was a change of pace of what was going on. I mean, now Daredevil's always in jail all the time. I I, I wish I had a dollar for every time they put Daredevil in jail. Well, and people find out. And every, crooked and every lawyer. time he got Fred Flintstone and could see. And then get hit with, yeah, he's like <laughs> <"Bling>, <laughs> rummaging on, on, on. through the uh, the closet, and the bowling ball hits him in the head. And now you can see. <laughs> and then he's uh, <laughs> he gets hit by a a, 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 a flying horseshoe, <laughs> and like now he's blind again. 
Oh, hey, so they haven't all been told. Not all of the great Daredevil stories have been told. Uh, no, we're just saying all the great ones have been told. Those aren't the great ones. No, those are the okay ones. Yeah. Um, also, we got trailers. We got trailers for, uh, in addition to Spider Verse, uh, Peacemaker. First, uh, <laughs> first look at Peacemaker and Vigilante. Yeah, yeah. and it looks worse than what? the first trailer. Oh my I gosh! Was Eagly? Like, I did not like this trailer. Wow! At all. I didn't I didn't like Eagly? I'm it surprised. So lame. It's a spinoff of your one of your favorite movies of 2021. And it just, uh, it's like the least, my least interest, the most least interesting story they could have told any of those characters. Wow. Ouch. I don't know why. Who chose Peacemaker? James Gunn, evidently. I chose Peacemaker. <laughs> I, I think it looks pretty funny. I didn't. That eagle pisses me off. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> when the eagle hugs him? That doesn't warm it. your, okay. Well, no. I, I hate Alex it so is much. cold, cold heart. I'm it getting... could be great. I've been wrong before about James Gunn, but this one just. I don't know. Everything about it just pisses me off. He directed almost every episode, too, from what I understand. So, terrible. Right. It's right. giving me a lot of Harvey Birdman vibes, which ain't a bad thing. <laughs> just because of the eagle. Podman Ron, what do you think about Peacemaker? You know what? I didn't see this trailer. All right. Well, so I did not. Know. Just wait another month or so, and it'll be out. I think it when, now, when is it premiering? January, by the way, guys. I think. Uh, yeah, like January. 14th, 17th, 13th, something like that, mid-January. Now, uh, but um, James Gunn kind of hinted this week as well that he may spin off another um, Suicide Squad character into another TV show. Please. so <laughs> Any one of them. Uh, of- and, well, in this trailer for, uh, we didn't mention this, in the trailer for A Peacemaker, you see uh, uh, what, um, Arm... <laughs> Oh yeah, there's somebody in it. There's a the detachable yeah. kid. Yeah, arm fall off boy. Yeah. So yeah, anyone so, but him so. too. My He's favorite. There. All right. My well, I, favorite character. I look forward to hearing Alex's review of Peacemaker next month. It might be great. It might be. All right. Love it. I it, it. It may be great. I, I knew it all along. <laughs> Five out of five. <laughs> I oh, you go back and listen to the tale of the tape. I always said I didn't that's, know. That's always <laughs> the emptiest threat because none of us are going to go. Back none of and us listen. are going to listen to this crap ever again. <laughs> Nobody cares that much no. to go back and listen to a prior episode. No, no. I gotta sit through two hours just to try and prove Alex wrong. No, thank you. I'll, I'll let him think he's right. I don't care anymore. All right. Any other big news coming up? Uh, not to my knowledge. Like I think the uh, what's wild is the uh, um, Spider Verse. You think that would be the the trailer at the front of Spider Man, but you know we got it like three weeks early. So uh, I'm curious if there'll be a different um, Doctor Marvel. Strange. It's gonna be Doctor Strange. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. It'll be the Doctor Strange trailer at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Doctor Strange. Oh, wow. Uh, Very excited. And I mean, we can all agree that. Hugh Jackman's Wolverine's going to show up for a snippet in uh, Multiverse of Madness, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, he will. Uh, I think uh, there there was, I didn't read it, but there's an article, people are speculating that the uh, dark uh, Doctor Strange will show up as well. The one yeah. from the um, uh, what, what if? if TV show. What if? Oh, excellent. That's great. So. That's great. Just writes itself. <laughs> it writes itself. <laughs> they They know what they're doing. Why Why get another actor when you can just have two Benny C's? Well, this hey. one's going to be animated. He's going to fight his animated evil self. <laughs> you know, this is what got us into the mess with WandaVision anyway. It's because Bateney said that he's he's going to get to act and, and fight somebody that he's always wanted to act with. <laughs> That's right. Talking That's right. about yeah, talking about the fact Run. that he got to play two parts. Running his mouth. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> he had to go on national TV and be like, I was kidding. It was me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Well, speaking of national TV, Alex, I know this one uh, will hit you hard. Uh, one of one of TV's national heroes recently yeah. passed away. Who? 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 <laughs> 
Podman Ryan, I know this was, uh, you'd brought this up. I think you actually wrote it. Uh, tell us uh, about the big loss this week. The big loss was, uh, and you, you well, weren't prepared for it, Brad? You don't have an intro? I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't, no. Well, you just wrote it, you wrote it down as we were well, starting the podcast. You should have already read the news. Didn't I didn't even show? see it. I didn't know about it. You didn't know? I don't think so. Alex, you want to uh, tell us who it is? I don't know. I don't, I don't he has know. no clue. No. I know it's, exactly who you're talking about because it was all over my Instagram, but I was like, I don't know who this is. <laughs> okay. Not only us. did I not not only did I not know, I didn't care. Wow. It was okay. Carmine Ragu is it Raguza? <laughs> it was the, it was the he's always ragu. prepared, folks. Yeah, he's it was always the pre- big ragu from Laverne and Shirley. Who? Uh, I can't think of his name. Is that who was on your on your Instagram feed, Alex? Yeah, it was some old dude. Perfect. Why, why was ragu <laughs> the big ragu all over your Instagram feed? That's the most curious thing I've ever heard. I call a lot of middle aged people. I guess so. Wow. Well, Alex. The show lasted until May 10th, 1983. I don't know why you wouldn't have seen this. Yeah, why you wouldn't have loved Laverne. His real name was Eddie Mecca, and he played Carmine Ragusa, who was the love interest for uh, Shirley. Laverne or they Shirley. Called him, they called him the Big Ragu. The big one. Yeah. He was the Big Ragu. And, uh, yeah. He was wow. uh, he, he was a huge part of my childhood. Did he have any? Did he do anything after Laverne and Shirley? Uh, he did an episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, did he really? Okay, wow. Yeah, he played. Uh, if you remember the uh, that's episode, his entire IMDb. <laughs> if Laverne you remember Shirley. the episode where uh, uh, D fights boxes, uh, the other lady in the gym. Okay. The other lady's father, uh, the one that she was uh, fighting, uh, was her coach. So. Oh, okay. That was him. Yeah. Fantastic. Good guy. All right, very good. Well, we will uh, we'll miss him miss him dearly. Uh, anyway, uh, no movies. To- <laughs> oh wait, we have another in memoriam though. What? Oh, not as big as the big ragu, but I guess. well, to me it was. To uh, me, to wrestler. me it was. The wrestler. No, what a dick. So, uh, uh, I don't think I've ever told you this before, guys, but. Uh, I sent you guys a film earlier today to to catch up on from the 80s. Did you guys see this movie when you were kids? No. What movie? Oh, oh, yes. Six the Pack. Six Pack. Yes, of course. Oh, we yeah, yeah, Repeatedly. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Alex yeah, fucking I'm... hung up, I think. <laughs> He's like, I'm out. <laughs> Alex, are you even still on? There I'm you are. here. Okay, you I... just covered up your camera. I've... Yeah. I okay, you're fine. Care. Yes, so, so uh... Six Pack. The Six Pack starred Kenny Rogers. It was his first after The Gambler because remember The Gambler was a TV show, uh, a TV right, movie. Right. This was his first major uh, uh, movie or yeah. his, the movie on screen, or maybe the only one. But it was Kenny Rogers, yeah. Diane Lane, young Diane Lane, the lovely the Aaron Netflix Gray. Yep. Yeah. Aaron Gray was the love interest. Aaron Gray was the love interest. Barry Corbin from uh, Northern Exposure and all sorts of other stuff. Uh-huh. Right? He's on was Yellowstone he, right now. Was he one, on one of the kids? Was he one of the kids? <laughs> he, he was, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I wish that would be great if he was. And uh, Anthony Michael Hall. Yeah, from, that's uh, right. He was the brainy one of the brainy kid or whatever. He was the brainy kid that knew how to fix the uh, knew how to fix right, the car. Right. Ken, Kenny Rogers was a uh, a dirt track race car driver, and he ends up. Saddled with six orphans. Yeah. But there's six, six orphans that they know how to fix a car. Yeah. Each one with a different personality. Yep. <laughs> and they became his pit crew. Yep. That's yeah. a great the show. Six pack. Great movie. Great movie. Did you know no. that it's the only credit that my dad was has? What? He was in the six pack. <laughs> Wait a minute. First of all, is is it called six pack or the six pack? I think I've seen it both <laughs> ways. I think it's called six pack. Okay. It's just called six pack. But I've seen I, I saw it posted as the six pack too. All right, so. you, you sound like an old man calling it the six pack. So I watched the sorry. six pack on the Netflix. <laughs> Heard about it on yeah. the Facebook. All right, so, so your we, dad was in six pack. My dad was in six pack. <laughs> so the, part of part of it was filmed. I think when they told him that. He, that that he had to take the kids 
It was in front of the DeKalb, uh, DeKalb County Courthouse. Yeah. And you can see my dad walk right by on screen. Holy crap. <laughs> that is a huge acting gig right there. Isn't that a, <laughs> oh, now Take we, that, Alex. Yeah, check out check out Brian's dad's IMDb page. <laughs> check out my dad. I gotta go put him on IMDb. <laughs> you need to. Man yeah. walking by. That's Man hilarious. walking by. All right. Walking so man. disinterested yeah. man walking by. Well, hey, um, as our listener knows, uh, my dad passed earlier this week. So uh, I'm sorry to hear so, that, Brian. Thank you, thank you. But yeah, that was uh, he was so proud. He was so proud of being in six pack with Kenny <laughs> I'm sure, Rogers. I'm sure he was. Did he actually get to talk to Aaron Gray? <laughs> I, man, I think he talked to Kenny Rogers, and I was like, he should have talked to Aaron Gray. Yeah, really. But yeah, I remember as a kid, like we watched that thing repeatedly because my dad was on the courthouse steps walking by. Because he was, uh, <laughs> uh, is it uh, streamable anywhere? Do you know? No, I had to. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to go buy it. I had Aww. to buy a physical DVD of uh, six pack from to get Amazon. your old man to sign it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's no. great. Well, yeah. I, I thought you meant you maybe you bought it before. No, no. It, you know what's wild is I haven't thought about it. In probably 35 years. <laughs> like, But I was like, I was like, wait a minute. That dawned on me the other day. I was like, yeah. It was like one of those uh, stories from when, childhood. <laughs> when you so were I reflecting went, about your dad's greatest accomplishments. <laughs> His greatest accomplishments. Man on stairs behind <laughs> Kenny Rogers. Hold on a minute. I'm seeing where it's streaming at <laughs> so I can look. It's not. I've already looked. Oh, so I, I would love to see that again. I went. I, I logged on to Amazon. I found it for ten dollars. The DVD will be here tomorrow. Wow! So, All right. Well, you'll have to send us a screen grab. Well, if you're going to come into the viewing, we'll be playing it on a loop. <laughs> Six pack. <laughs> People will be just, laughing, just the laughing and crying. Part, just the yeah, just across. the walking. Part. <laughs> no, we'll play the whole movie. We'll just make everybody shut up right as he walks by, <laughs> and then we'll. <laughs> So, yeah, all right, that's well, awesome, man. Hey, it's more more accomplishment than my old man or Ronnie's old man or Alex's old man has ever done. So, yeah. <laughs> definitely more than Alex's. <laughs> oh, by far more than mine. Well, so, congrats, there you go. congratulations on that, one. Dad. I'll get you to walk past the camera one day. No, oh, there you go. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, you can do that for me. That'd be great, Alex. <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> g- gag about that was uh, when Abed showed up on uh, um, Cougar Town. Oh my god, that's awesome! And he mentioned six pack. No, 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 no. no. no but like, there was. Alex, a, a, did you ever see that? Yeah, it was a yeah, crossover. I've, I've yeah. watched every episode of Community. Yeah, but that, did you see the the? But you have to go and see the oh, uh, the, the Cougar, Cougar Town Town episode because he really Cougar showed Town up on Cougar, Cougar Town. Does it? Yeah. I, oh, I know. Yeah. I know. What's so funny about it is just he does exactly what he said he did on Community. <laughs> you see it happen on. Cougar Town, <laughs> and it's just odd because they're just sitting there carrying a conversation. Yeah, and he just jumps up and, and runs. Off. Well, he starts nodding. He starts following the conversation and nodding, and then he <laughs> then he starts like mimicking the the, the lines because he's heard it so many times. He's like mouthing the lines behind him. That's great. It's good shit. Yeah, Cougar Town. That is doing cinema. That, All right. Well, we'll have to find Cougar Town to stream as well somewhere or another. All right, uh, movies. Nothing, nothing to report on movies quite yet. I don't think until Spider Man or yeah, Spider Man comes out in a few weeks or next week or whenever week. Um, yes. But a lot of stuff on TV. It sounds like right. And leading off TV is the one show that. Most of us have seen. I still haven't bothered watching it yet. But Hawkeye. Everybody loves Hawkeye. So right. much so that I may actually watch it eventually before the end of the year. It's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> it's the, easily the best Disney Plus show. And I knew it. And I knew Hands it. down, it is the best. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't too long ago when the, most of the people on this crew here... Uh, talked about that j- watching paint dry is more exciting than watching Jeremy Renner act, right? Am I wrong about that? Let's go back You're and listen. Wrong. Go back and listen to a podcast. <laughs> oh, no. We need we need a podcast historian. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, <laughs> get us an intern. <laughs> they can reference, you know, when all these co- conversations happen. That would be nice. Uh, Alex, uh, you've been awfully quiet here. Tell tell me a little bit about Hawkeye. 
Let me let me tell you a little bit about Hawkeye. So Hawkeye follow, follows the adventures of Kate Bishop and Clint Barton. Kate Bishop is the newest Hawkeye. She's a young lassie who just really likes the old archer, and she's like, I want to be Hawkeye too. And they team up, and it follows very closely to the Matt Fraction run of Hawkeye, which is my personal favorite comic book series like ever. Wow. It's 22 issues of Pure Delight. Um, it's a great series. And yeah. It's just, it's a Christmas time, fun, jovial, just holiday thing. And it's got some good heart. It's like the best Disney Plus show, I think, by far. It and Loki are my personal favorites. It's just a good show. It's doing and great. What if. Better than What If? Mm, we don't talk about that one. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just try to stir up shit. That, um, one, that one, that one. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Podman Ron, how does the how does Hawkeye fit into the MCU? Like, wh- where does it fit in? I think it fits in about probably about two years after they've come back, maybe a year and a half after they've come back from uh, Endgame, and uh, Hawkeye is pretty much trying to reestablish the connection with his family, and, and uh, he uh, notices that. Uh, someone is wearing the Ronin suit, which is the suit that he wore when everybody had blipped out and all his family was gone and he was just seeking revenge on any criminals back then. He didn't care what happened. And so now someone's wearing the suit and he's trying to find out who it is. It turns out it was Kate Bishop. She accidentally, she didn't accidentally, she took the suit at a, an underground criminal auction and kind of wore it out not knowing that it belonged to Hawkeye and anyway Hawkeye confronts her gets the suit back and now it's uh, all these criminal people want to know who was in the suit you know if if Ronan is dead and uh, so they're all after Hawkeye because you know he's they don't know he was Ronan but they know he's got something to do with Ronan and chaos ensues it's a really good show uh, i mean the action is great uh the, the i can't think of her name Haley steinfeld steinfeld is perfect in this role that their chemistry is great and i believe you know i will say i was wrong about jeremy renner no only, only because i think he's just been overshadowed he needed to really to have uh, a movie on his own to to kind of show that personality of Hawkeye's personality and, and the character and develop the character. He never really had a chance in the other movies to do that. I mean, the closest he got was in game. Age of um, Ultron too. Yeah. Then age of Ultron. You're right. But, uh, but you know, that first Avengers movie, he, he was the bad guy, you know, brain controlled bad guy for the, you know, right. halfway up to the movie. So anyway, he really does a, a great job in this movie. It's uh, like Alex says, it's got a lot of heart in it. Uh, a lot of heart. Yeah. I, I, perfect. It's a perfect show. I mean, the last episode, uh, if you don't get that perfect of an episode, it was really cool. Um, the action in it is fantastic. The, the special effects are great. The and, trick uh, arrows. The trick arrows are, are awesome. And wow. uh, and uh, and Brian, I'm sure will go into his theory, and uh, I'll hit on my theory of that. But <laughs> my version of Brian's theory. First part of the theory is uh, at the beginning of the of the series, you see that you know a ten year old Kate Bishop in 2012 is, you know, she's in living in a penthouse because she, her family's rich and her mother and father, and the attack of New York's happening. It crashes in on her building, and her father dies. But in my belief, I believe her father is still alive. And I'll and Brian came up with an even better theory, in my opinion. So I'll let Brian take it from here. Yeah. So well, I'll give my little review first. Oh. Like, madam, wait. But the uh, yeah, the uh, Hawkeye. The I think what I like best about it is it's not you know, global stakes. Yeah. It's literally, he's going against the tracksuit mafia, which they're funny on their own. And that's the right. way they were in the comic. You know, everybody was bro, bro, bro. Like I used to love it. Cause it would just be like, they would just, when, when something would happen, you'd have like five people saying bro. 
you know? Um, but, uh, uh, so the stakes are pretty low from that standpoint. It looks like they're going to build the universe. I mean, we've already introduced Echo, right? And Echo eventually wears the Ronin suit, right? So the assumption is that's happening. They've teased Kingpin, right? In the, in episode oh. three, uh, okay. you basically saw, uh, her, her dad was part of the tracksuit mafia and she was at, um, in like a, uh, uh, uh jujitsu class and uh, somebody wearing a black shirt with a black suit, uh, like, you know, pats her on the cheek or something, and, and says something, but it's it's Wilson Fisk, right? So Kingpin's back. Well, it sounds um, like the actor he played Wilson Fisk. It sounds like Vincent. Yeah, Vincent D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio. Yeah. Yeah. Is, it, is it? I mean, I know there's been yes. a lot of back and forth on yeah. that. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's Vincent D'Onofrio. And then you've got, uh, we've built, we've added Swordsman, right? We've added, uh, we know that um, White Widow or, or New Black Widow, whatever she's going to end up being called, uh, is going to show up later in the series because she's coming after uh, Hawkeye. So you've got the tracksuit mafia, Echo. Echo wants uh, Ronan because Ronan killed her dad. When, so so Echo's coming after, and, and Clint just wants it all buried. He just wants to move on from it, wants to leave it all buried. You know, uh, um, and then you've got Clint's whole thing, you know, the survivor's guilt about the fact that, you know, uh, Natasha died, you know, in his place. So you've got those things going on and, and uh, there's no there's no big bomb that's going to blow up in New York. There's no, you know, uh, interdimensional portal that's going to open. Right, right. That's but good. Y- you didn't have to make these huge like world ending, you know, stakes if you got characters that you care about. Right, and so you're building and, and adding characters and uh, um, and bringing back characters and stuff. And but I think they're going to add more characters than we've already said. Right, we knew Swordsman was coming. Right, we've seen Swordsman. Um, I think Swordsman is the red herring. Everybody thinks Swordsman's the bad guy. Swordsman's not the bad guy. Like uh, uh, he'll end up being the good guy when it's all said and done. Right? Yeah, it's just, this is the same Swordsman from the comic books. Same Swordsman from, from the comic okay, books. All right. Yeah. Um, so uh, we've got Wilson Fisk. I don't think Wilson uh, Kingpin's going to have a lot to do with it. I think they're just reestablishing that he's in the universe. Uh, obviously, you know you'll you'll have White Widow and, and Clint reconcile in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and then we know Echo's getting her own TV show, right? So at some point, she's going to adopt the suit and then abandon the suit and then go into her own series, right? Uh, I think what it's going to boil down to is, and this is what Ron was alluding to. Uh, the bad guy is going to end up being Kate Bishop's mother, uh, um, who is the head of Bishop Security, and her father uh, uh, was the head of Bishop Security, and that's why they're wealthy. That's why they're rich. Oh, okay. And uh, in the first episode, you, what it sets it all up is they're at a party, and there's an auction at the party in the wine cellar for Ronan's costume and Ronan's sword and different artifacts from Avengers Mansion, foreseeably. So um, it's kind of a carry uh, carryover from what happened in Spider Man um, Homecoming, right? Right. What happened? All that stuff with the, that was at Avengers Mansion. Long story short, the uh, I, my belief is her mother, who is uh, Vera Farminga uh, from a lot of stuff. She's in the the Conjuring movies. <laughs> She's from a lot of stuff. Bates Motel. She's been in a ton of stuff. She's like that util- one of those utility kind of actors. She's a really good actress. Um, uh, I my. Uh, prediction is we're going to find out she's about a mask Ooh. before it's all said and done. And honestly, if you look at like I heard, her, I, I heard that prediction from others. So, but <laughs> so you ahead. ain't so special, Nurse. All right, all right. so special with that one. So my prediction is she's about a mask. However, Uh-oh. if you dig into the back catalog of uh, Marvel, Madam Mask's father was a villain named Count Nefaria. Do you guys remember Count Nefaria? It sounds do. familiar. Well, my prediction is, and, it, and I sent you guys a side by side photo. My prediction is they're going to tweak it, and instead of it being her father's Count Nefaria, it's her husband. Ah, oh, okay. And if you look at what her husband looked like <laughs> in the photo, uh, and what Count Nefaria looks like in the comics, they're twins. Yeah, yeah. So I got a feeling Count Nefaria is going to end up being her dad and still alive, and so her parents are both bad guys. Son of a bitch. Now, how, how does this... Now, that's all... 
are are these still grounded villains? You know, you talked about the uh, Trackstar Mafia. Everything's grounded. It's not Earth uh, Earth stakes here or anything like that. Is that is it making it? Are we getting into too much of a superhero y type show? Or is well, Nefaria could be. Yeah, because Nefaria, I mean, he's got all sorts of powers, like flight, super strength, like uh, laser vision. Like, he's got all sorts of crazy uh, powers. They would have to power him down, right? They'd have to power him down anyway because, like, he doesn't really fit. He wouldn't fit right, right. the Although Marvel he, Universe. He started out in just as just a crime lord. He didn't uh, – he, he eventually got souped up in, in the Avengers, but, like, when he was – a bad guy with the X Men, and even before he was just a crime lord for the Magia. Is it Magia or Magia or uh, Magia? No. What Magia. is it, Alex? I the Magia. Yeah, so he wasn't super powered to begin with. So, All right, maybe they'll just but make well, my I'll crime post. Lord. I'll post both of these side by side photos on our Instagram account, there so you, you can see the side by side comparison of the actor that plays Kate Bishop's dad and Count Nefaria. And uh, Kate Bishop's mom and uh, and Madam Mask, and you can decide for yourself. <laughs> decide for yourself, dear listeners. Uh, how many episodes are have there been so far, and how many will there be? There are three, and there's a total of six. Oh, okay, that's doable. Yeah, and they're about forty you, minutes. Yeah, they're it's really good. You really need to watch it. I mean, it's it's they they go really fast, and it's a really good show. Yeah, yeah episode three, just the car chase scene is, is fantastic. And then when they break out the trick arrows, it's so good. The car chase scene was awesome. Beat for beat. No, I had read, uh, I think I had read kind of uh, different reports. One that Matt, Frac- Matt Fraction said mm-hmm. that, the right, uh, and, and somebody else, maybe the artist or whoever, uh, David Aja. We're, we're, we're pissed off that they weren't included in things, even though this is really their storyline. And then I Matt, read that, no, 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 they were included in every step. Uh, do Matt we know anything Fraction, more about that? Matt Fraction is credited as, as, as an associate producer, but David Aja is com- not getting any credit. Oh, He's okay. getting no credit. And, and uh, the whole title sequences and end credit scenes, all right, of that stuff that is that David style. Aja yeah. art. So, yeah, that's the big scandal is that they, they cut him out. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he makes that book. Like, Matt Fraction's, of course, his writing is great, but the only reason it's great is because David Aja just puts incredible wow. visuals. So, Marvel screwing over these creative types. What, how, uh, how's that going to last? Not very well, long. Not very long. All right. Uh, well, cool. Well, I will definitely check check it out over the holidays. I can I can do six hours worth of Hawkeye. I'm sure. It's a, it's really good. Very very good. All right. What else do we got here? South Park is South Park we'll back. Re- oh. We'll revisit. Well, I was gonna say let's revisit Hawkeye. We'll, we'll do a recap. So. We'll a se- do a recap. A, se- a season recap, definitely. Fit in strong or if it falls on its face like uh, Wandavision does. As long as Hawkeye gives some sort of a good speech at the end of it, like a uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, then that's all I'm looking forward to. It's got to be a speech. Got to be a speech. Uh, Podman Roy in South Park. Did you put South Park on the list? I didn't. Let's put that. No, must have been Brian. Brian? Mm, no, I didn't. Alex? We know it wasn't me. I didn't think it was you. What about Lost in Space? So speaking of Lost. That was PMR. Lost in Space Season 3. I I still didn't make it past Season 1. I liked, or no, that's not a lot. I did watch all of Season 1 and then a little bit of Season 2. I liked it. I just got busy and didn't finish it. But now there's Season 3. Yeah, it's it's really good. I mean, this show, you know, and I've, I've talked about it before, and, and Season 3, I've not finished. i got about two episodes left. But it, it's ending really, really strong. Great cast. Great science fiction I, I mean like I said before if you just want to sit down with your kids on a show that doesn't have cussing and sex and just obnoxious shit and just everybody can watch it and right. it's, I mean great action in it um, uh, great, uh, great special effects I mean I, I can't say enough about the show I mean I'm sad that it's ending oh is it is this yeah, this is the last season. Oh, okay. But but in the same time, I mean, it kind of 
a finale, you know, it's kind of good. It's kind of good that it does have an ending and doesn't just keep going until it just gets shitty right, like right. this shows does. So, uh, really good show. I, I strongly, strongly recommend this show. All right, I will. Uh, I will watch it. Like I said, I liked it and everything, but it uh, didn't. It never did get any love, really. It didn't seem like. For as, like you said, from what I've seen, the production value, acting, and everything was fine. Nothing wrong with it. The production value on this beats a lot of shit that I've seen in the theaters. And, like, the science fiction part of it, the, you know, the storytelling of that is just, I, I mean, it's, hell, it was better than the last Star Wars movie. I mean, it's just good, well, classic. Yeah, really. Well, I know. That's not that's saying not really much. Hard. That's not saying much, but. I mean, it's just it's just something different. I mean, you're, we see the same superhero stuff. We see the same, you know, Star Wars shit. Everything's the same. It's nice to, to see something that's a little bit different. I know it's based on the old Lost in Space right, series, right. but but very loosely. No, no giant really, carrots attacking them. No, but it's really good. It's a really good show, and it's uh, it, it's a great great characters, uh, great show. So. Uh, can I rewind a second to when PMR was first starting? He said, uh, "You know, it's if you want to sit down with your son and watch a watch a show." Yeah, <laughs> like, there was a little bit. I wish we had a bed of cats in the cradle. I wish I would have watched this show with my kid. <laughs> as he was starting that ramble. <laughs> we'll watch Lost in Space, kid. You know we're gonna watch that robot. <laughs> Don't I'll be home. home. Yeah. Well, it's, you watch it? have you watched it any, Brian? I mean, I've yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, we watched. We've only watched the first episode of season three, but yeah, like uh, Joshua loves that show. Joshua's kind of like our like this. He likes Star Trek. Like he he he'll take Star Trek over Star Wars any day. So uh, he's uh, and he he likes Lost in Space a lot. So, but uh, yeah. It's a good show. The best thing they did, probably the best character on there, is uh, Doctor Smith. Yeah. Um, so she's so conniving. She, uh, she, uh, and I like what they did at the beginning of the series where she—you don't know who she is. She stole the identity right. of Doctor Smith. Right. You know. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah she. So. Uh, she's just totally evil, actually. So. All right, I'll give it a shot. I got two things to catch up on now. Jesus, people. I just wanted to say, dear boy. <laughs> oh, oh, dear boy. <laughs> so, uh, Alex, any love for Lost in Space, or you let no, your old man watch that I, by himself? I don't care. Yeah, sorry, okay. well, we're, there, we're not there. cuddling by a fire watching Lost in Space anytime soon. <laughs> well, there goes your holiday. You know, hey, we'll have man. a good time then, PMR. Yeah, you know, we're going to have a good time then. <laughs> Damn. Well, speaking of fathers and sons and outer space, Brian, I know you've been watching Foundation. Have you? That that is a show that I finished. Watched. Where is that segue going? <laughs> fathers, fathers and, and sons. Yeah, father or brother, dawn, brother, day, brother, nighttime, all this. Yeah, stuff. Uh, yeah. Isn't it twilight? Twi oh, twilight. No, it's dawn, dusk, dusk, dusk and, and day, and day. Yeah. Uh, but Jim, yeah. Are you? You had a question. Perfect. Uh, muted. Uh, we can't. He's muted. <laughs> you muted yourself. Uh, but yeah, on Apple TV Plus Foundation, uh, Brian, you watched it. I'm not done with it yet. You're not done with it. It's, um, a, it's a slow uh, burn. About three quarters of the way finished with uh, season one. I'm curious if we're going to get a season two. Um, this is heady stuff. You yeah. know the. Uh, uh, it's different from that standpoint, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's Isaac Asimov. Uh, wrote it's based on his book and that's like the uh you know the the godfather of uh science fiction you know a lot a lot of this stuff was was based on isaac asimov stuff asimov ideas um the the current sci-fi or the sci-fi that we've known right you know um but it's uh it's a good show it's set what uh, a couple thousand years in the future something like right? that yeah and we've you know we've colonized different planets uh, a little bit of uh, Dune in there, right? So totally, maybe yeah. you know, maybe Frank Herbert stole from Isaac Asimov as Lucas stole from Frank Herbert. But um, yeah, so they've got these different planets. The different planets have kind of created their own sort of subsections. They're all under an Imperium. What's interesting is the Imperium 
um, uh, is has been run by the same emperor uh, for that whole two three thousand year time, um, but he clones himself, right? Uh, so, but, so again, George Lucas, we mm-hmm. got the, we got the bad guy called Empire, and Empire. there's clones involved. <laughs> there's clones involved. Uh, there's there there is one robot left, but there was many robots, and they had a robot, you know, basically um, jihad where they killed all the robots that they reference. Um, but because uh, the robots began to develop emotion and that sort of thing, and they were seen as soulless, and so they were killed. Um, the uh, but yeah, what's in, the most interesting part to me, at least, well, I guess there's two things is is the whole concept around the emperor because. It's a tribunal because uh, there's three of them, but it's the same person. But it's him when he's a young, uh, either a child or a young adult. It's him when he's in his like 30s and him when he's like in his 60s. And so they call him Brother Dawn, Brother Day, and Brother Dusk. Right. And they rule uh, the the empire together. But it's but the reason they do it is because he had he evolved and he had he had different. Um, Ideas or different like viewpoints, you know, at those different ages, and so, but one will one will age out, and then they they kill him, and then a new brother Dawn is born. They clone another one. So, um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. The other thing that's interesting to me because I just like statistics. Did you guys take statistics in college? No, I, I remember Podman Ron Actually, doing a presentation on statistics, and it was really more a bunch of pictures than it was numbers, I think. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does that sound about right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alex, have you taken statistics? I have. I almost failed it. Oh. Ooh. Uh, I love statistics. And that, and that's the way it is. I mean, either people love it or they or they, or they hate it. They don't get it. I can't. But, yeah, I love it. So, you know, essentially nothing's impossible in statistics. You have probability, but nothing's impossible, right? And so, um, and it's, you know, what's the probability that something will happen versus something else happening, right? And essentially, once you understand statistics, you understand how most decisions are made from like a political or a, uh, um, like a, a consumer, you know, uh, um, once, if you have enough data, if you have enough plot points, you can predict the future right. is what they're basically saying with foundation. And so you've got this math sect that is like, you know, math is their religion, right? And if you have enough data, you can predict the future. And so um, this uh, mathematician, who's almost like a heretic at this point, predicts the end of the universe. And, um, and that's where it starts. And you start to see uh, like all these plot points he's predicted, and he's got a plan to save the universe, um, but uh, you don't know how it's going to all unfold. So, but yeah, it's it's very interesting uh, show. It's it's different. It's different than a lot of uh, uh, of sci fi that that I've ever watched. Right? Uh, yeah. There's a lot of different ideas that that you know in forty five ish years of watching sci fi science fiction. Nerd. It's nice to find something refreshing, right? But uh, but yeah, I like Foundation a lot. I just it is a slow burn, yeah. and I'm worried if we're gonna finish it. Yeah, so. it, uh, we thought we watched the last episode, and we were we thought there was another one after that because it it does a little bit of a cliffhanger and everything, but it certainly doesn't tie up anything whatsoever. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We should see, but it's good. I enjoyed it. Yep. Do, is my, do, you, do you agree with my explanation, Brad, of uh, my synopsis? Yeah, I my wife is more attentive to it than I. I'm on Reddit goofing around while I'm watching it, and that's not a show you can do that with. So I've I've lost a bunch of things, and I'm like, wait a minute, who's this person? Is this this person's mother or the daughter? Who is this? And all that. So she kept up with it better than I did. But again, it was still enjoyable. And like you said, a little bit different than uh, other stuff that's out there. Yeah. Does that so, have a robot? One. Again, oh, okay. yeah, one. Right. Does it look like a robot or is it just somebody? Sometimes. It's a human. It's a uh, sometimes she looks like a robot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fuck it. All right. What else? Uh, any other TV, new TV shows? I think that's about it. Um, 
Alex, I know you, you, I think you've got a retro review for us, a retro movie review? Oh, heck yeah. And uh, in the green room, Alex, you were teasing us about the greatest movie ever. Is this what you were referring to? No, I was referring to the greatest movie <laughs> 21. Uh, but I did watch, my retro review is, I forget what year it came out, but the Muppets movie. Uh <sighs> Wow. I rewatched the Muppets movie. Yeah? How was let that? me tell you. From the 80s? The, like 1981 or something? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It is quite a gem. Oh, it's fantastic. It is wow. so funny and so quirky. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not really much you can say. It's pretty much, it's it's a classic, but I can give you a couple things. The puppeteer work is just... It's off the charts. The plot is so goofy. I mean, it's just a long form, more expensive Muppets episode. And it's just, it's just great. I mean, it's just a really fun movie. I, I don't really know what else you could say. You have an amazing talent with Jim Henson, of course, and you got Frank Oz doing some stuff there. I mean, there's just so many people involved who care so much about these characters that you don't really think it could be bad and it's not. I will say the movie is pretty funny. There are multiple shots of like a Confederate flag. I mean, <laughs> there's there's things that if they made a Muppets movie now would be like on the number one checklist of don't include. But like, wow, Miss Miss Piggy, her whole like pageant show is like super. It's got like a Confederate flag. And there's like jokes about like like transgender. Like they see Miss Piggy for the first time, and Gonzo goes, "Oh look, a he won it." It was just. Wow. I mean, it's out there, but it's still, I mean, it holds up as just a classic, like, movie. It's just one of the best 80s movies ever. Uh, yeah, it's well, great. Let, let me ask you this. How many was, I can't remember, it's been a long time since I've seen it, was there a lot of celebrities that, you know, came right. out in it? I mean, right. I wouldn't know, but there's a couple I recognized. <laughs> was the Louise? <laughs> there's a couple I recognized, but nothing... Did, did you do you see a do you see a man wandering Steve around Martin. on some courtyard steps in a background anywhere? Big Martin was there. I did. Oh. <laughs> Big Ragu. I did Big Ragu. I did recognize Steve Martin. And there's a couple people, but nothing. <laughs> that's one of my favorite lines is when uh, when they go to the they go to the restaurant and yes, uh, I was gonna say the same thing. Steve Martin. He uh, it's a, they order wine and it's a screw off. And yeah. he goes, would you care to smell the cap? <laughs> no, no, I thought you were going to say when he keeps going, but it's a myth. It's a myth, myth. myth. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that was that was the running joke through the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was in there yeah. a couple of times. <laughs> I love that. What I was All right. It's like my favorite line, man. Uh, yeah, I love the Muppet movie, and, and he, I'm glad you brought this up, Alex. Thank the, you. Uh, because we can go down the rabbit hole. Did Did you guys know that the there there is a rabbit uh, a Muppet movie uh, trilogy? There is, yeah. It's it's a yeah. so Alex, what's the what's the trilogy? I think isn't the the second one's definitely a Muppet Christmas Carol, and then there's the third one. I don't remember the title, but I know what it is. The Great Muppet Caper. Right. Yes. No, 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 no. There's like a a canon Muppet movie trilogy. Based off the first just movie, this, just this universe, it's just this, okay. right? So, <clears throat> you had this movie. They go to they go to Hollywood, right, to become stars. And at the at the end of the movie, they they sign their big Hollywood contract, right? And it, the movie ends with them making the movie about their adventure getting there, right? Right, just like so in Pee Wee, all meta, right? Yeah. It's it's that meta ending. Well, the second movie, they're they're acting in a movie as the Muppets, right? So in the Great Muppet Caper, that's that's the second movie they made under their big ah, okay. uh, their big movie uh, Hollywood movie star contract. So they're they're right? acting in the in the Great Muppet Caper. Yeah, they're playing the movie. Okay. So you're seeing the movie they made, their second movie. But they don't reference any of the stuff in the first movie, but it's they, right. that's them acting in their movie. So it's like they totally meta, totally meta. Interesting. And then the third is the Muppets um, from what 2011, 2012. Right. 
because it comes back and they've all split apart and Muppet Studios is about to be demolished, bought and demolished. And they and uh, it's because they have to produce another show or something in uh, in time before their their big movie contract expires. So they have to all get back together to do one more performance to basically reactivate their their contract. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. So, damn. It's pretty cool. Pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. So I, I will. Uh, I, that's another one on the list. I will watch that. Oh God, I love the Muppet movie. It's so good. I have not seen that in a long, long time. Uh, all right. Yeah, we had. I'm trying to think what uh, who all we had. We had uh, Dom DeLuise, right? We had uh, oh, um, sure. Steve Martin. You had um, who played the the? Oh, it was a. Uh, um, Orson Welles played the uh, the oh, yeah. movie executive. Yeah, right. Eric um, Idle in there somewhere or another. It feels like Eric Idle was in there. Yeah, that's. Uh, God, I love the Muppets. All right, well, I'll give that a shot. That sounds like a good Christmas. They just movie. can't. They just cannot seem to do anything with them anymore. Uh, it just, five out of five. Five out of five. Uh, that, the the Muppets movie. Uh, was pretty Tell good. Tell us about the new one. Madeline Kahn, quote unquote, new one. Sorry, I thought that the the new the new era was the newish one. Uh, I thought that was pretty good. It wasn't horrible. They tried that new show on Disney. And oh I yeah, think it, it failed miserably. <laughs> but I heard it was pretty good. What was that? Oh, it was playing Miss Piggy for a second. Sorry, oh, I was oh, scrolling through something. Look at this. Like, oh, Alex yeah, even yeah, has his man. Beanie Baby uh, Kermit the Frog there. My Beanie Baby Kermit. He's in his own chair. He has his own chair. <laughs> Not the one old Audrey have it. Uh, because I wanted it. <laughs> oh. Did, Ooh, I, okay. offered, I, I offered her a Kermit. She didn't want a Kermit, so I said, no. fine. Screw that. All right. Chicks, man. Chicks. Chicks. All right, well, let's move on to... Uh, to see what people are looking at. What you looking at? Alex, I, I know uh, you've been watching a movie. I'm not really sure why Why do you didn't put this maybe on the, the movie review list here, but uh, is this the big, our, our big greatest movie of the year award well, I didn't know. Well, I didn't know if I should put it on the movie list because, like, I I didn't think we're because it's such a it's not really comic book involved. Ah, or I see. Okay, so I was trying fair to be, enough. I was trying to be polite. Let everyone else talk about their things. Always polite. Yeah. So, is it, am I the only what you're looking at? I don't know. I mean, I've been I've rewatched instead of watching Hawkeye and this other bullshit that you guys have been talking about. I've rewatched uh, Eastbound and Down and Vice Principals recently. Wow. Uh, Why? <laughs> but, uh, both of those are fantastic shows. Yeah, they're both really yeah, good. Both of them are good. Both, both solid picks there, Alex. Right, Come I'll, on now. I'll shut up. I'll shut up. I'll shut up. I'll shut up. Uh, in addition to Foundation, I've been watching some quality shit. I just haven't been watching Hawkeye. Okay, Alex? All Give right, me a break. Right. It's fine. Um, uh, I've also watched Ghost. I think I have mentioned it. If you go back and listen to previous podcasts, I've mentioned Ghosts. It's a UK show. It came back for season two. It's on HBO Max. Uh, CBS has made an American remake of it. I haven't watched it yet, but it's good. And then... Um, Tough Money, uh, which is, I think, it's like a Polish show. Short six episodes, just like Hawkeye, uh, but about some bumbling guys who kind of get mixed into uh, uh, robbing a bank and getting mixed in with a mob. But uh, I think it's Polish. It's uh, subtitled, so Podman Ron, you would love it. Um, But that's about it for me. That's what I've been looking at. Before we get to Alex, Brian, anything with you? Uh... Other than the Sopranos, I'm cycling back through the Sopranos. Okay. Uh, I watched uh, just this evening. I went ahead and broke down and rented it. I kept waiting for this to show up on streaming service, HBO Max or something. And now that I've paid $6 for it, it'll show up next week. <laughs> but uh, I went ahead and rented and watched Old, M. Night oh, Shyamalan's okay. Old. Yeah. So has anyone else seen this? No. I almost went and saw it, but I saw the reviews and went, mm, maybe not. Yeah. Probably for the best, Alex. Probably for the best. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting movie. Uh, it's uh, they 
there's not really a twist. I guess there's a twist, kind of, but uh, it's a lot of uh, just melodrama. Just yeah. Uh, well, it's based off a book, isn't it? It's based off a, uh, a graphic novel. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh. So I think it's called Sandcastles or something like that. But um, but yeah, it's based off a graphic novel. It uh, you find out why they're there, what's happening to them to an extent. Um, uh, but really, it's just uh, the time logic of it doesn't make any sense. It's like the parents don't start aging until like two thirds through the movie, and then they're they're gone like that. Yeah. Like all of anybody over a child's age is, is snuffed out immediately. But they don't age at all, and it doesn't explain. And then, like, time will affect one person, but not another person. It's just so, inconsistent. Like, the core logic of it is just kind of all over the place. Um, uh, and then you've got adults trying to act like children uh, with varying degrees of success. Uh, the kid that was in Jumanji, like the nerdy kid in Jumanji, is like one of the main actors. Oh, okay. And yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, the girl from uh, Last Night in Soho and uh, Jojo Rabbit, uh, the girl that was in The Wall. Right, yeah. Right. Those are like the two main characters or the two main like uh, actors. And uh, she's really good in it. Like uh, he can't pull it off. He, he – he, it's so cringy when he's trying to – when he's like a 15 year old, but trying to act like he's six or whatever, it's a uh, 20 year old trying to act like he's six. It's, it's laughable. It's he didn't go uh, to drug school for long enough. <laughs> what's that? He didn't go to acting school for long enough. No, nope. he didn't go. It reminds me of, uh, the girl in the water. Remember the girl in the water? Yeah, like yeah. it was so all over the place with yeah. like zany characters. You know, he always seems like only... he has good ideas. It just can't execute on it. Sort of. They can't execute. Focus- too much on what what's the twist going to be? Yeah, I think yeah. he needs to make a movie again. You know? <laughs> yeah, I would like just make a movie, just make a decent movie. So, <laughs> well, you uh, I feel like yeah, though right. that's what uh, that's what he knows. So he, can, he can dial it in and just throw the twist in at the eleventh hour, and then yeah. now you feel like you got to go see it. To figure, oh, can I? P- it's like you're watching a puzzle. Can I figure out the puzzle before he tells me what the puzzle is? Right, right. Yeah, that last piece you know? falls so. out. And I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, when the movie came out, for like COVID and like the summer release, it did pretty well. If I yeah, it did pretty well because it was like one of the first big movies that actually made it out. Yeah, and it's it, it's and that Shyamalan, and it's just like what you said. People are like, I want to see if I can figure this out for myself. Like, I need to see it. He definitely has a fan base. It's just like, man. Don't rely on it. Yeah, it's almost like you're looking at. Remember when this was a popular thing in like the late '90s? But you, the uh, the um, hidden image art, <laughs> right? You right. know, and so it'll just be all like dots. But if you focus on it, like you'll see an image come out of it. It's like that. It, it that's like his form of movie making. It's like there's a there's going to be something, and right, maybe right. you can piece it together gotta, first. Yeah. That's a yeah, good analogy. Be, I like that. It may not be a great twist. But there'll be some sort of twist, and so yeah, you're you're going to see if you can figure it out before they and they so you can go, hey, I'm smart, I figured it out. Right. But it's not necessarily a good movie. So. Yeah, well. I'd give it a two out of five. So, what that two out of five means? Uh, I watched I did, it. I don't want to see it. <laughs> right. If you want to see it, go ahead. That's okay. But I strongly mm-hmm. recommend against it. However, oh. I won't block your car from leaving. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. That's... A one, I'll lay down in front of your car. I, yeah, please, please, please don't. I, I will wrestle the keys out of your hand. Well, that sounds well, like... Friends watch bad movies. Yeah, that's exactly. What an <laughs> asshole letting me watch a bad movie. <laughs> uh, Podman Ron, do you have anything? I'm, I'm really... I want to get to Alex here. I want to make sure that we give Alex plenty of time. But this is going to be the big reveal. I do not have anything. So, Alex can finish it off. Alex, tell us about this movie that you claim is what? Tick, tick, boom. Uh, it is the directorial debut of Lin-Manuel Miranda, uh, creator of Hamilton and In the Heights. That's his big claim to fame. Uh, it is the story of composer and lyricist Jonathan Larson uh, 
who wrote the music uh, for Rent, uh, which obviously is a global success. But this is the musical he wrote before it, the second oh, musical okay. he wrote, All right. which is titled Tick, Tick, Boom, which originally was just a like monologue uh, that he performed on stage at one of the theaters. He was just like a personal monologue about his life um, and about turning 30. That's the, the, the center of this movie hinges on the fact that in a week from where the movie begins, Jonathan Larson will turn 30 years old and he hasn't done anything. He hasn't written his first musical and put it on stage. He hasn't done anything of note. And it's just kind of that story. So, um, so let me hold, hold up. So I thought this, I was, I thought this was more of a biography, but it's it, actually, it is. It, oh, okay. It, the musical itself is a biography. Gotcha. Um, okay. But the, an original, if, if, the original uh, Tick, Tick, Boom was just a, a, a biography written by um, Jonathan Larson, but it turned into a musical in 2001 that uh, became like a stage musical with a uh, okay. book and, and lyrics and a whole story that gotcha. just depicted his life. I, I thought it was um, this was just a straight biography, but this is a musical that just happens to be a biography of yes. the guy. Okay, I'm of with the you. Guy. Um, I'm with you. And, of course, what Jonathan Larson is kind of most famous for is he died the night before the first Rent preview ever actually happened. He died the night up before it, um, which is like of what? crazy. Before Rent. No, died of what? Why oh, did, how he, had, did he, he had a um, – oh, what is it? It was – his um had AIDS. No, he did not have AIDS. He was straight. He was a straight man. <laughs> um, he did not have the He had AIDS. straight AIDS? <laughs> Wait, straight was, people can catch it. It was some sort of the AIDS. It was, it was I'm just, just I'm just filling in for PMR. It was some sort of it starts with an A, but I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so this just kind of focuses on his life. It starts Andrew Garfield, Vanessa Hudgens, Alexandra Ship, who played Storm in the later oh, okay. X-Men movies, yeah. um, and just a bunch of musical theater actors that Lin Manuel knew and that Jonathan Larson knew before his untimely passing. Um, and it's just great. I will say the first act, the direction isn't great. I'm not a huge fan of that first act. It's it's not well paced. But I think overall, this is a movie with a terrific script. I mean, Andrew Garfield himself has a terrific performance. He's obviously going to get nominated for an Oscar. Wow. Uh, if he doesn't, it'd be a crime. It'd be even more of a crime if he didn't win the damn thing. Because he really does bring every ounce. It's the best thing I've seen him in. And it's just since the social. Media oh, release. you haven't seen him in Spider Man yet. He died of a um, aortic dissection. Is, yes, that's but uh, due to Marfan syndrome. Yep. You know what Marfan syndrome is, right? I do not. <laughs> that's uh, the giant syndrome. Marfan syndrome is uh, so what Andre that giant had, and, and um, uh, who else? There's there's been several people. Well, the whole story behind him dying is that. He went to the doctor that earlier that week and was like, I'm not feeling well. What's wrong? And they misdiagnosed him with the flu and just gave him flu medicine. He died later that week. Wait, uh, was so he a I'll... giant like Andre the no. Giant? Oh. No, he was just a no. normal-sized guy. But Marfan <laughs> Syndrome, it can, it, he's probably above average height. Yeah, he was a tall guy. Yeah, but yeah, but, but Marfan Syndrome is also what's, what Andre the Giant had that made him so large. Yeah, he's tall and lanky like me. Um, Uh-oh. But, but, Uh-oh. but yeah, um, it's just a really good movie. There's a lot of heart. It's it's really it's a celebration of life. And at the end of the day, like it, it even prefaces with that. It's like this is how Jonathan Larson died, but this is just a movie about his life, how he lived. Um, he lives in a very shitty New York apartment, and he didn't care. It's just kind of this. It's this love letter to not only New York and his friends and family, but it's just a love letter to theater overall and just the passion that goes behind it and. As a theater geek myself, it's a great movie. And it has a wonderful performance by, I think, I can't remember his name, shit, uh, but someone who plays Stephen Soundheim in the movie that recently passed about two weeks ago. Um, and a really memorable performance that really shines a light over the entire film as a looming presence of importance in Jonathan's life. Um, and yeah, it's just a good movie. It's one of my favorite musicals of all time. Um, and I was really excited for it, and it didn't let me down. It's a great movie. It's a great directorial debut. And where Boom. did you see see this at? In the theaters or on Netflix? It is, it is on Netflix. Netflix, okay. Yep. 
And what what uh, number are you going to assign it? Oh, it's a five. Oh, I mean, it's, it's just it's just one of those movies that really captures not only the magic of theater, but the the pain and grit in it, and the and the absolute love you have to have to pursue it. Um, and yeah, it's just it's a love letter to every actor working, to every composer working. It's just a love letter. Um, a love letter. I, All right. A love letter to New York. Mm-hmm. Right. There, are, what's wild is like the they they didn't diagnose it. Let me show you. Let me show you guys a photo, a side by side photo. All right. uh, but you, but there's like genetic. There's like a, you can almost see it to an extent. Like uh, I think one of the big things is like a, like the forehead, the cranial area is is, is more pronounced and and larger. It looks um, like a, but yeah, look. I'll show. So that's the picture of him, and then here's the picture of. Uh, uh, Andre, and you can almost kind of see like hey, where the the uh, take a look at that when it comes through. <laughs> Good old Andre. You know, on I think on Amazon there's a uh, Andre the Giant doc. Or no, I think it's maybe it is on Max. I forgot, but. Really good documentary on Andre the Giant too. If you want to learn more about, yeah, I want to see that. But you can see it, right, Ron? Oh, I see it. In the no, I'm talking about like in his face. Yeah, <laughs> like, a little bit. Yeah. Are you just are you just making fun of of Andre the Giant or Jonathan Larson? Yeah, I think I'm not both, making fun I think of either. Both of them. No, I'm talking oh. to PMR. Both. Ron's been serious. I'm I'm actually making fun of them both. That's <laughs> nice. Wow. <laughs> uh, but I think you've piqued Podman Ron's curiosity now for this movie. I think uh, maybe he may watch it now that, now that. Well, now that Alex has talked about it, he did show me. It's been several months ago, Alex. You showed me a preview of it, and it seemed pretty interesting. What you know, the trailer I saw of it. So it, it's, I actually, I mean, uh, and I I'll think probably watch it. One part I didn't mention is it really takes place during the AIDS epidemic, um, and it talks about that, and that that obviously is a huge part of Rent. Too is is discussing the AIDS epidemic and the lives it costs. And there's, I, I just really appreciate. I think overall the film, like the film's depiction of how fleeting every day is, and making the most of it, having the people you love around. It's just a really, I mean, it's it's a heartbreaking Jeez. movie, but it's a beautiful movie. I, I Maybe you ought to sit with your old man and watch Lost in Space, asshole. <laughs> right. <really? laughs> Instead of just right. snubbing your nose at Lost in Space. He's rubbing it. <laughs> rubbing it in, Brad. Sorry. Hey, look at, worse. I'm going to do this one more time. Oh, so my you guys gosh. Will... <laughs> Brian will not let it go. I'm going to put this side by side, I think. So look. Uh, here we see. Put that on our Instagram. Yeah, yeah no, put that one on good. next. <laughs> with your Dr. Are you Demento. To, are you just want me to laugh, Brian? You just want to move? This yeah, is a different photo. Your, I'm not trying to get you to laugh. I'm trying to uh, get you to look at people's foreheads. Look at this. Well, Alex, you've got you've piqued Brian's interest in this film. I think. Well, it's just all right. Here's the thing. I'll send it to you. I, I find it interesting that it's Marfan syndrome when you can almost see it, and the doctor didn't. Yeah, the doctor. Maybe he did. He not diagnose it, or is it a misdiagnosis? Yeah. Kind, look at the, he didn't want to say anything. Look at the photo I just sent. The side by side. But I mean, Jonathan Larson's a genius. Just so was Andre the Giant. Yeah, you're saying Andre the Giant. Why don't you watch that documentary next? I think that's what you it's should do. Not a, it's a it's a, <laughs> bio, it's a documentary. All right, well, it's a good movie. If Brad, I know you've been on a music. You've been talking a lot about. Music. I've been yeah. I may give that a shot. I watched his. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna get nominated for Oscars. So I just, I'd go ahead and watch it if you're into the Oscars. All right. Well, well this has been our meta meta musical episode between the Muppets, yeah, right, and Tick Tick Boom, a musical about a guy writing a musical. Hey, hey, a movie about a guy writing a movie, a musical about a guy writing a musical. Hmm. Good stuff. Right. A lot of good stuff out there to, to watch. Uh, Pod, Podman Ron, what what else might you uh, be checking out this holiday season? You got a little extra time on your hands, maybe. Man, what's that? Just Spider Man. I don't really have anything. Uh, yes, oh, Cobra Kai's coming up. Cobra Kai's uh, coming Spider-Man. up. Um, the, Matrix? the Matrix is supposed to be coming out, but I've never been a big Matrix fan, so. 
Sex in Sex in the City <laughs> sequel. No. No. <laughs> All right. Didn't didn't pique my interest, but I appreciate the thought. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm glad you appreciate it. I'm glad to have a little appreciation. You know, one thing we did move away from, uh, aside from the weekly episodes, uh, is the boss cast. Uh, oh no, the uh, I did want to mention as a follow up to uh, Brian's report. I think last episode of the live in studio studio audience uh, that they announced it's tomorrow the, night. Uh, is it tomorrow night? Well, uh, mm-hmm. they announced the girls from uh, Facts of Life, Facts of Life, including Jennifer Aniston as, as Blair, Blair. Yeah. Gabrielle Union as Tootie, Allison Tolman as Natalie, and Catherine Hahn as Joe. What? What is I think that? that's going to be hilarious. I, I can't well, wait all of them are pretty good except for uh, Catherine Hahn. I don't know why she would be Joe. Uh, you don't make love Catherine Hahn? Yeah, I think she. Yeah, but she's not really movie. like the. I mean, I don't see her as Joe. She's kind of butchy. She can be butchy. Yeah, she can be butchy. Are you kidding? I don't know. I don't know if I can get it. Brian. I don't know. What the hell's wrong with you? I don't know did, if I can get a confused chubby watching Catherine Hahn as Joe. Did you? Did anybody watch the? Uh, Nothing. Mrs. <laughs> something or another. We Shut just up, we man. just moved past it. <laughs> He's moved past it. What's We're that? Past. I said I don't know if I can get a confused chubby I over know. Catherine Hahn playing Joe as opposed to uh, old school Joe. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, uh, Nancy Ma- McKeon. Yeah, Nancy McKeon. There you go. Um, oh, what I was going to say, that's where this episode is really winding down here. Uh, we moved away from uh, the Spin the Wheel uh, movie wheel. Spin the Wheel streaming wheel. We should bring we- that back next year. We did, and whatever movie I was on, I watched. I have <laughs> no idea if I can remember what now. it was. I don't even know. Whatever I don't the remember. Fuck that was. Next year. And you know what? I think we also need to bring back the death pool next year. But well, we talked about it this year, <gasps> but we never did it. We need to, we need it to was bring Val. It Val is yeah. what I watched. And, well, you reported on that. I reported on it, but Alex needs to watch it. Alex wasn't on that episode. Yeah, it's another documentary like you love, uh, a biography, uh, Alex. Val, what's it? What's it about? It's Val Kilmer. Oh, I wanted to watch this. We talked. It's, there you go. It's so good. It's so good. It's uh, because uh, kind of like the thing with Punky Brewster. He had a video camera. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, he a great took, set of knockers. A great set of knockers, and he basically he took it with him um, on all these movie sets. So you see behind the scene footage on Top Gun. You see the behind the scenes footage on Tombstone. By, uh, and uh, most importantly, the Island of Doctor Moreau, which is the last Marlon Brando movie, and it was most importantly, most importantly would be Batman. <laughs> well, but well, it, it, it talks a lot about Batman. But historically, like the Isle of Doctor Moreau, uh, Doctor Moreau was it's Brando's last film, and uh, like they brought in like a stunt actor because Brando was in such poor health. And because Brand, like the the director was really just a piece of shit, so um, but that was like a his, that's like a that was like a big moment in cinema, and it kind of shows at that moment where Kilmer and David Thelwes, uh, who was um, uh, Lupin in the Harry Potter movies, they were both yeah. in that movie, and it shows segments where they're confronting the director and everything about Brando, like uh, really because because cool. what what he's doing to Brando. So uh, it's it's really really good. Watch Val. It's got Tombstone stuff in it, Top Gun, Batman. Oh, oh it's a great Real movie. Real genius. All, all your favorites. That's yep. pretty Top cool. Secret. <laughs> Top Secret. Yeah. <laughs> I can get behind this. I haven't right. seen both of those movies, but oh, and it's also like the reason you know some of the stuff uh, I thought it was cool because. Nowadays, you see him when you see him, you see him wearing like all these turquoise like jewelry and uh, like southwestern like garb and everything. It explains why he does it because it's his mom. We it's his mom. This. I remember this. Shit. Were you on this one? Maybe it was. I think I was. Okay, yeah, it's his mom. It's well, it's all her old it. jewelry. Go so watch go it. watch Val. It was worth a second review. Wow. That movie's so good. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> that's pretty good. So. All right. Well, uh, you know, we ought to come back. We we will come back after Spider Man, right? Yeah. And uh, 
and then we need to kind of plot out live on the air, so to speak, uh, our plans for next year, right? Again, I would yeah. love to do an all animation episode. We want to do an all bond episode, something well, like that. I think that would be interesting. I think that'd be good. And I think also if we do the celebrity death pool, we draft it like uh, like uh, the NBA uh, oh, no. draft or the NFL draft. If you're going to introduce new rules here, Brian, that's that's very dangerous. Yeah, you know, you know how we are with sticking to rules. For PMR's first draft pick, yeah, that's exactly it. You PMR got... selects <laughs> Sean Connery. He's already dead. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, big right there. <laughs> oh well, well. All right, well, hey, Spider Man's next, and yeah. Um, and well, we got more stuff to watch. But until next time, save it for the podcast.